This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by PortCityCoin.com Now, now, when when you said that the <laughs> the uh, the, uh, the Department of Financial Services people seemed like they wanted to strangle the, <laughs> the DA's people, can you detail exactly what gave you that impression? Well, the the thing is 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 is, is more like the, the the fact that at one point the AG basically the AG the the Attorney General or the Assistant Attorney General didn't at one point when the judge started asking about what is Bitcoin, Bitcoin is this, Bitcoin is money, Bitcoin. And if you read the transcript, you can see at one moment that the AG was like, I don't know. Ah, ah. So the judge asked the, the, the AG, is like, should he close his business? What are you telling me? That the, the person who closed his business suddenly has no recourse in court until they lose their business? And the AG started like patsy dancing around the question because it would become so ridiculous. So you're saying that I'm not allowed to sue the government even though the government made me lose my business. That's what she was asking. And the AG is like, no, but you don't understand. And it, it would, that whole exchange was very funny in a way because the judge is like, no, that doesn't make sense. Someone can sue the government at any time in a way, she was saying. Did you get the impression that the judge... Uh was more sympathetic to you uh, during that hearing or more sympathetic to the state overall? 50-50. Mm. She, she's a judge, so she's neutral. She, she, there is, I mean, she's a brand new judge. So to tell the truth, she, she, she just started being a judge in June. And it's a, it's a, it's a peculiar thing. I mean, this will be one of her first big case, I believe. What's her name? And... Uh, San George, Justice San George, Carmen San George. Okay. She used to be a pundit on C on um, MSNBC mm. for legal stuff. Mm. So she she used to be on TV. So she knows she so she she has to play. She you know she has to be very neutral. And this is a case. That there is no settlement in the case. And you know we'll have to go all the way to the end. So she will have to make a decision, and most likely her decision will be appealed from either side. How many years do you think this will take, or, or will it be measured in years? No, I think it will take another year, year and a half, because the thing is, once you, the, the problem is, once the justice seems to be very slow, and yeah, it's slow at the beginning when you have to collect all the documentation, but once the will start. It's like you have 20 days, so every 20 days there is something new happening. You know, it's like you put a motion on the table, you have 20, they have 20 days to, to answer that motion, then you have 10 days to rebut that motion, then if you rebut, they have 5 days to answer that motion, and then the judge has 45 days to, you know, these are the time frame we're talking about. So... Usually cases start to extend themselves when either side goes into an agreement. They're like uh, me and the AG, we agreed that we were going to push the case by six months because they needed more time. You know, I needed more time to find a lawyer. They needed more time to understand what Bitcoin was and how to defend themselves. And so the first six months, you know, I needed to find money, raise money and things like that. So... For the first six months, it takes a long time. What kind of? And, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. And then it will the time frame gets shorter because once I got my lawyer, I'm like, no, no more, no more extension. You have 15 days to answer this. You, and they're using all their extensions, so it's it's kind of interesting to see that. Uh, what would you say was their, um, the defendant's uh, demeanor toward you and, and the, their lawyer, the, the Attorney General's lawyer, what, what was their demeanor toward you? Did you feel like you were being treated as an equal or that they were, uh, oh my God, this the, one, the, the, pe the peasant is revolting? Uh, no, the thing is the peasant know how to play 
play the game. <laughs> so the, um, the, the, the thing is, the, 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 the system is in itself, if you understand the system, you understand that you have the same, the peasant has the same equal right. So the thing is, if you read the text, is in, we, we live in an adversarial system. So the, the, because we live in an adversarial system, uh, one side has to say, I'm the worst, I'm the worst, I'm the worst. You know, like taking a, when you go to read those court things, you have to read it with a grain of salt. So, yeah, it's like, I'm the worst. I don't know my business fell because I am completely, I never ran a business before. I am a complete idiot. And that's the argument they have to make. And they build their case from that. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the education. And they'll put everything on top of me. I mean, and on my side, my lawyer will say, no, the government is a beast. They're like the worst of the worst. They, they're, they, they're to get me. And they're to get me because. And my client is the most nice person. And, you know, both sides play that game. That's an adversarial game. And and if you know how to read between the lines, and so the problem is the media, the journalists, and everybody else don't know how to read it in the, in the line, between the lines. So they, they take advantage of that. And they say, oh, Morpheus is a criminal. You know, I'm, taking, I'm going back to Morpheus because he's a more criminal case, and you can see the pattern happening with him more clearly than with me. With me, I'm just a pain in the ass to the system. And that's how they, the government is treating me. And they, they, they're giving me my fair shake. I mean, I cannot deny they're not giving me my fair shake. The, the problem is they're playing the, the, the card of the time. Time is also an element in the game. And they're trying to push as much time to see what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And on the Morpheus case, you can see how they... You can see that adversarial game played right now. I mean, he has a bullet, so he's a terrorist, basically, they're saying. He, he smoked weed. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a degenerate. Uh, he talked on the phone about going to Mexico. He's, going to, he's a flight risk. <laughs> and that's what the government is saying about Morpheus. And uh, you, you see that right there. And so this is, I mean, this is what's unfair in a way in the system, is that the peasant don't realize and don't know how the system really works to defend themselves against... Well, how, how can they? They, they, have to, they have to eat, so they have to spend money, they have to spend their time doing things that do make money, not things that are completely in, non-productive, like reading the law. <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and that's what the problem is. is. Is we're in a system that's so adversarial that only those who have money can defend themselves. And and those who don't, well, they can they can take a plea, and that's what's happening, and it's so unfair. And that's what I, I I just discovering myself with Bitcoin how unfair the system can be, and and what we need to do to change it. Do you have any sense of what you think the number of Bitcoin arrests has been in the United States over the last year or so? What the, the, I, I have the public record, but if there have been more arrests, I don't know about them because those people don't either don't come to me and say, "Tio, I've been arrested," blah blah blah. So I'll never know about them uh, because sometimes the cases are sealed. I mean, they're just the, the the case, the record is expunged, and we'll never know. I mean, if someone doesn't come to me and say, "Tio, I've been arrested," and this is my story. No, I will not know, and I don't have that number. And if the the thing we the one we hear about the eight or six we heard about was because they were publicized and they made it to the newsprint. Otherwise, I don't. I they could be more. They could be a lot more out there. And if we Bitcoiner don't get, you know, if we Bitcoiner don't get together at least to to create a network of information where, hey, I heard that so-and-so got arrested in small town USA. We need to do something, or someone has been questioned. We need to do, you know, we, we need to relay that information 
we'll never know. Because even question is, is something. If, if someone is question of a Bitcoin, I'll never know. Was the, uh, the court event uh, video recorded for the public? No, he, 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 it is not. And the one in New York could be if someone from the media were to come and say, we would like to ask permission to record it. And the judge most likely might say, yes, why not? But, but no, one, no, one, no one did in New York? Well, nobody made that request. Okay. So someone has to make the request uh, officially. It's very easy. So anyone who wants to, you know, any member of the media or any member of the public, actually, all they have to do is contact the clerk and ask them, hey, I would like to record it. Can I? Yeah. And and they would let they would they would let you do it. I mean, don't, don't it's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, this is completely and it's free. changing completely changing the subject. But uh, what what do we have to do to convince you to move up here to New Hampshire with us? Ain't going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> we have we already have a little bit of freedom here. Well, the the, the thing is. I, I, what New Hampshire has done is wonderful, but unfortunately, I'll say this, that you guys are using the definition set up by the bid license. And so technically, you have made freedom using the wrong definition. Do I make sense or no? No. Well... You guys are going by the definition of Bitcoin is money. That's what the New Hampshire legislature went by. And then they went, they say, oh, well, if it's money, then we are going to exempt you from this regulation. Hmm. Well, I'm but not suggesting, I'm not suggesting that Bitcoin uh, ruling, Bitcoin uh, law is the main reason to move to New Hampshire. I'm just saying it's, it's a better place to live, it's safer, it's got so many other freedoms that so many other places don't have, and the system is so much more accessible. Well, the, the, the thing is, I want, I, I want, the thing is, the, the, I live in New York, I'm a New Yorker, <laughs> so I love New York, I'm so sorry. I, I, I've lived in Alaska, and Alaska for me, I mean, I, don't, I, I cannot compare it to New Hampshire because I've never been to New Hampshire. But I spent five years in Alaska, and by being there, I have discovered a certain freedom. And, and uh, you know, when the state gave me a check of $2,000 every year for living there because they, they invested the money of the oil, you know, the oil corporation, they say, this is the resource of Alaska, it's the resource of all the Alaskan, and we're going to make a permanent fund. It makes you think a lot about how to, to handle community living. And the fact that Alaska is so huge, so big, there is space. And freedom is, is, is where you don't... Freedom for me is where the rule, don't, the rule that are built are to let you do what you, do, you can do with the resource around you. And so they... <laughs> But Alaska is colder than New Hampshire. I'll say that. No, New Hampshire is actually colder. <laughs> well, I mean, it, dep well, depends, it, it, it depends on which part of Alaska you're in. But well, no, it gets colder. I mean, in Anchorage, it used to get when I was there. That at the end of September, you would be at minus thirty, or at the end of October. I'm sorry, at the end of October, it would be thirty below. Now that's colder. And it would be thirty below from October all the way to May or yeah. March. I'm sorry, March. Yeah. So. Yeah, New Hampshire gets peak of coldness that are higher than in Alaska, but Alaska gets you get like the cold from October all the way to March. I'm thinking. I mean, I'm thinking about the coast, the coastal, um, uh, the southern parts of Alaska, not not the whole thing. Or Juneau? <laughs> oh yeah, you think of Juneau or things like that. Yeah, it gets a little bit warm. It gets warmer than in Anchorage, but yeah, when Anchorage was like 250,000 people when I was there at 30 below from that to that. I mean. I had a friend who came for for vacation, and she left uh, at the uh, by the end of September, and she's like, "I cannot believe I'm seeing thirty below on the on the thermometer." Like, you know? yeah, 
Abby, I've only experienced that temperature twice in my life. <laughs> well, I can tell you living under that temperature for five years uh, every winter, it's interesting. You get used to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you learn how to survive. I mean, in your car, you have your shovel, you have your blanket, you have your, you have, uh, your hammer. You, you need to have all those tools with you, and you need to be able to access them because, you know, getting off the highway and doing, you know, rolling over and suddenly ending up in a ditch, that's a real possibility. And sometimes they'll never see you until the next summer yeah. when the cars start to sew up. You know, and if you don't know how to get out of there or survive in there, because, I mean, at the time, there was cell phone was not something you had in your car with you all the time. And so you needed to be able to, to survive for the, the 20 minutes to get out of the car and go to the highway and slack someone over. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you, you think of life differently. Well, moving back to uh, Bitcoin, um, uh, can you think of anything else that's on your mind lately that uh, I've sort of missed or uh, uh, that you'd like to talk about? Well, no, it's like everybody, well, the two things is if someone has been arrested for any reason and they have, they have been questioned on their activity on Bitcoin, I would love to hear from them. Uh, the second part is we should be watching the case in Michigan and in Florida, uh, in Arizona. People, if they want to write to them, I mean, write to the, all the Bitcoiners in jail, please do so because, I mean, some of them, like Randall Lord, is, is there for five years. And knowing that we're looking at, you know, we, we, we cannot judge what they've done, what the government, you know, that's not our place, but we can help them make a little bit, you know, help them give them more support as a community. And we need to, we need to be more, commu you know, we need to be a bit more community-minded in terms of what the government is doing and us. We cannot live in our, I would say, we need to be more, you know, it's, it's the Bitcoin, it's a community, and we need to be more uh, togetherness into telling each other what's going on. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, I think exactly the same thing, and I was think we were both we both came to that conclusion independently. I think the the um, yeah. uh, uh, well, is there one place people can go to uh, get all that information about all the different Bitcoin people they can write or Bitcoin Bitcoin detainees? <laughs> I haven't done the website. I've been using my my abolish the bid license dot com website, uh, and I want to. I haven't had the time to 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 start, uh, because I've been only working with Morpheus, so there is the Free Morpheus Facebook page, the, the, the Free Morpheus Titania, but the thing is when, when you talk about freedom, Facebook is not the place to go. And I have talked to a lot of people who feel like, uh, who feel they don't want to go onto the Facebook page. And so we need to, to move away from the, the Free Morpheus Titania Facebook into a website that is accessible through Tor, that is accessible through, you know, a Yonian website that's accessible without being tracked, basically, where privacy is also part of the, because freedom is also privacy. And privacy is dignity. I mean, all that thing goes together. And so we need to work on that. And we haven't, so right now, abolish the, Bitlicense.com seems to be a, a place where we can go, okay. and then he push he, he goes towards a different location. All right. Okay. Well, I can't. And if anyone wants to help on the website, please. Yeah. Well, volunteers hard to find, hard to keep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Theo, again, thanks for. Uh, for the time, and uh, more, more importantly, for what you're doing with Bitcoin and defending uh, its uh, its political well, freedoms. Well, Dave, without you, I mean, the, you you did the Facebook, you started the Facebook website. I mean, so if you hadn't, you know, you you part of uh, helping. I mean, you, you, it's not me, it's you, it's it's you and I, I guess, and other people that are coming about. So it's it's not me, it's it's all of us. 
Yeah, and later, the number will not be smaller. I'm pretty sure. Well, yesterday, I mean, have you followed what happened with the DA of Manhattan or no? <laughs> oh, uh, no. Was he the one that you, uh, the, you, you uh, heckled him at the speech? Yes, and <laughs> so the thing is, you people don't understand that that Manhattan DA is the president or used to be the president and founder of the cyber cyber DA and all the basically he wrote the book on what we basically what makes a cyber criminal under his eyes, and so I heckled him in during the you know I heckled him and another person came about to run against him as a write-in candidate. And that other person got 10% of the vote. Oh, good. So, that's big. For someone who's technically running on a pose, the DA of Manhattan, uh, I'm on his radar now. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm if afraid I end you up are. in jail myself, we'll never know. <laughs> it's possible, but we just need to make it sure, we need to make it so that jailing you is like jailing Gandhi, basically. Make it that way. <laughs> And then it becomes a big deal, and it just creates it, it makes it makes your whole movement stronger when they arrest you. If that's if that's what's going to happen to you, I hope it's not. No, it's not going to happen. I hope not, but uh, you never know. They, uh, I mean, <laughs> you never know. Maybe I'm on a they listening on me or things like that. I mean, I don't do anything illegal. That's the reason. Well, because I don't want them to have anything on me. That's one but, thing. You, that's one thing you do still have to learn about the United States is that there are two. There's a list, two million pages long of things you're not allowed to do, and you're probably doing one of them right now. Oh yes, I, I am. I, I'm sure I'm doing, and will defend it, and uh, I welcome it. But I, I'm not looking for it. I mean, Morpheus. Morpheus, tell me. I mean, Morpheus. I, I see what Morpheus goes through, and I don't want to be in that position. Yeah. But at the same time, I will go after a DA that that uh, Manhattan. Unfortunately, is not on the encryption story. It's not on the Bitcoin story. But that DA is the reason we are in this Bitcoin story. He's the one who has been lobbying a lot of people uh, for Bitcoin to be regulated. He doesn't make it known because, but he is the reason. Yeah. Well, we'll see where it goes. It sounds like they have not been particularly fascistic in their actual enforcement yet. That's why I think I once referred to their the bit the the New York disposition toward Bitcoin as as sort of like onerous but velvet gloved. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so onerous that nobody can do it, yeah. and everybody's scared. And this is not how it should be. That's not freedom. Right. Freedom well, New York, New York is not. Have to look at your back. It's known more for being onerous than it is for being velvet gloved. And it's if you think if you think about it, it's the least the state with the least freedom in the United States by a factor of two. Apparently, it's like twice as unfree as California, which is the the second worst. And of course, <laughs> the velvet glove comes off any time they want to just kill somebody. For for handing out loose cigarettes, exactly. And the the discussion around loose cigarette, I mean, we we're, we're going to have it. I mean, we 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 we're going to have this discussion of what is freedom, and they we're going to New York. I think is this is going to be the on the agenda for the next four years. So we'll see what comes out. We'll see. Thanks, Theo. I'm probably going to be on the uh, conference call, by the way, this uh, later today, uh, and I'm going to record that, too, if no one objects. Well, the conversation is already recorded by the government, so yep. you will hear the, <laughs> the little disclaimer of the government. So we know we are being recorded by the government, so you might be able to record it as well. Right. Yeah, I'll just so, ask. You know, I've obviously hadn't had a chance to ask uh, Morpheus yet, but it would be nice to have a conver conversation partly with him for the first time? Well, you're welcome. I mean, it's, you, it'll be more than happy. So, yeah. you, you, we, we, we had had a, a lot of uh, uh, people come in the, throughout the weeks. I mean, uh, uh, what is his name, uh, uh, who's uh, on a book tour? David uh, Koresh? No, no. Uh, uh, I believe Kinesh, 
who's on the book tour? It's really weird, Theo, because I was just about to say David Koresh as a joke when you said it. The he's the uh, he's the one uh, who who use. Uh, remind me if it's him. I'm 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 trying to remember. Uh, what what was he associated with? Well, he's writing. He wrote a book. I'm trying to remember right now. I I completely forgot. Um, uh, he's uh, not David Koresh, the the the, the guy from uh, from Texas. It's a uh, uh, I forgot. He's a libertarian who is running for office somewhere, and he's uh, and he's uh, he wrote a book. Yeah, that's not ringing any bells for me. Oh, I... Is, uh, he used to be in the military. That still doesn't get me there. I don't know of any libertarian candidates writing books that I can even name, let alone ones named David. Uh, I'll... Well, anyway, I'll maybe, we'll talk, maybe we'll talk to him later today. Maybe, no, he came and he... Yeah, he was running around and... Uh, so he came and said hello to Morpheus, so everybody is welcome to come on the conference call. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I may I may talk to you again, uh, you know, indirectly at least later today. Okay, well, thank you for, for, for having me. Hey, and, what time, uh, we'll what time would that call be in Eastern time? Eastern time, what, what time is the Morpheus well, we, call in Eastern time? 7.30, we start at 7.20, he shows up at 7.30. 7.20 Eastern Time? Yes. Okay, great. I think I I'll be there. Double, yeah, I think I'll be there. We, we it, changed. Okay, see you tonight then. Probably. No promises. That's okay. No, no expectation. Okay. You're free. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Theo. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Okay, bye. Bye. Rare Coins. Pawns. Gold and silver bullion. Check out Port City Coin in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for your precious metal needs. A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Happy to do a cash transaction. Why buy your metals from one of those slave state mints when you can support the free state economy? Visit PortCityCoin.com, or as I like to call it, PortCityCoin.com.